Welcome back college football fans, especially all of the Miami Hurricanes fans watching this video and even all of the haters who are watching this through an incognito tab in Google Chrome. It's okay, I know you're watching and it's okay to be keeping up with the Miami Hurricanes. I would want to watch greatness unfold as well, so just be sure uh, if you're not watching it in that uh, to clear your browsing history so all of your friends don't know it's okay, I won't tell them. Today what I want to talk about is just an overview of fall camp week two, mostly going over the stats from the scrimmage because of course that's what everyone is talking about and that's what everyone wants to know about. And I apologize, this video is a few days late. I've had a lot going on lately, and I'm actually working on an FSU versus Miami diss track that will hopefully be released later this week or sometime next week. So I'm super pumped. Stay tuned for that. Before we hop into the video, I want to take a quick second and mention the Super Canes fan of the week. This week, I have selected Alonzo1219, this guy right here. Uh, you, my friend, are the Super Canes fan of the week. Alonzo1219 actually has a YouTube channel as well where he covers Miami Hurricanes football. I will put a link in the description and in the comment section, so definitely check him out. Go subscribe. He's a really cool guy and again covers Miami Hurricane stuff as well so congrats to you my friend I do have a stat sheet in front of me if you see me kind of looking over a little because let's be honest I'm not going to be able to memorize all of these numbers but I'll kind of glance from time to time and just look at the numbers but let's hop right into it leading the pack with the quarterbacks is Malik Rozier he was uh, 8 for 14 for 181 yards with three touchdowns that's pretty impressive Evan Sharifs was 10 of 14 for 132 yards with one touchdown. Nikosi Perry was 6 for 15 with 68 yards, and this kind of hurts with one interception, so no touchdown passes. And Cade Weldon was 2 for 10 for 40 yards and one interception. Now also, uh, Testa Verde, and I may be pronouncing his name wrong. I don't keep up with this guy, but Debias, Debias, Debasi, Debas, Debas, something like that. Uh, they worked with the third string unit, so there's not a lot of stats for them. Uh, obviously, it's probably going to be between Malik, uh, Sharifs, Nikosi, and Weldon because everyone is still in the running for starter. Uh, now keep in mind that these stats are very good uh, for Malik. I will say things look really good for him. Apparently he has improved quite a bit on every aspect of his game. But keep in mind that these stats from all positions, especially including the quarterbacks, are from situational setups. So this isn't just you kick the ball off, run normal plays, there's a normal play clock, normal game clock, and then the, these were the stats for you know like a quarter or so. The, some of these can be purely situational where they start at the 10-yard line or they have to score while they're in the red zone within you know three downs and then they kick a field goal. So some of it, the stats, are they're situational. So you have to take a little bit of it with a grain of salt. But Malik did lead the pack, apparently looking very good. Sharif's looked pretty good as well. And Nikosi, you know, he, he's still learning. So the 6 for 15 with 68 yards and interception is understandable. And keeping the train rolling uh, with the wide receivers, and actually I do want to touch on because everyone's wondering, Coach Rick has still, of course, not named a starter for the quarterback position yet. I really don't even know if he will name it after scrimmage number two. We're just going to have to wait and see. That scrimmage will take place later this week on Saturday. Uh, keeping it rolling with the offense, some wide receiver stats. Berrios led the pack, of course, with a scrimmage high seven catches for 92 yards. As far as I know, he did not have a touchdown, but seven catches is is pretty stacked. That's pretty good. Richards had three catches for 91 yards and actually had one touchdown pass. Mullins, uh, 32 yards with one touchdown pass. Harley for 56 yards and a touchdown pass as well. The tight ends, Michael Irvin had two catches for 20 yards. Now, he did have a fumble. I haven't seen any clips or videos or anything for it, but he did have a fumble. Definitely something 
that we've got to work on this year is not fumbling the ball. Ball security has to be key for Miami this year on offense. Hurden had uh, three catches for 49 yards and one touchdown. And supposedly something that kind of scares me a little bit, and I think that Rick even um, spoke on this a little bit at some point, is the offensive line was up and down kind of all scrimmage. They weren't consistent in any way and I'm referring to the starters not just the second string and, and and third team apparently the starters the offensive line was up and down we have to have consistent play from the offensive line this season if we're going to get where we want to be and where we think that we should be so we need that O-line to hold up uh, strictly even just for the the quarterback and uh, so Walton can can stack up the yards and because no matter which quarterback we go with, we have to keep in mind that Malik has started some games, but he's never been the guy, like the guy all season. Whether it's Malik, Sharifs, uh, Nikosi Perry, Weldon, whoever it is, it's going to be their first time being the man, the guy, the leader. So we need the offensive line to step up so that way it can give him, whoever's that quarterback, a little more confidence as they sling the ball around. Moving on to the running game. Mark Walton had seven carries for 39 yards and one touchdown, and he did have a brief scare where he had to be helped off of the field, but supposedly, according to Mark Rick and the training staff, it was for a bruised hip. So he walked on, on he was seen after the game, walking under his own power, no crutches. So hopefully just a little bit of a scare there, but he should be okay. His backup, Travis Homer, had eight carries for 55 yards, he did have a fumble, so again, we've got to stress the ball security uh, for the rest of the, the training camp. Trayon Gray had five carries for two yards, and Atkins had five carries as well, accounting for 17 yards. So it definitely looks like, as we expected, Walton will be shouldering the running game uh, for the offense, and Homer should provide good relief as a, as a backup as long as he, we can stress, they can stress ball security to him. Switching it over to some defensive stats, um, linebacker Darian Owens was praised by Mark Richt for having six tackles. Uh, safety Romeo Finley had five tackles, which is awesome, and an interception. Supposedly the guy pretty much every scrimmage, almost every practice gets an interception. So I'm excited to see what Romeo Finley can possibly do. Uh, linebacker Quarterman had four tackles. Um, cornerback Malik Young had two tackles and also had an interception as well, so that's good to hear from the cornerback position. Uh, junior safety, uh, Jaquan Johnson, had two tackles and a blocked field goal. So that's super exciting to get a blocked field goal in a scrimmage. And defensive end, Joe Jackson had two tackles and one sack. Now the quarterbacks were not live for this scrimmage, which I feel like is a wise decision from Rick uh, because... Uh, First scrimmage of fall camp, you do not want the quarterbacks taking hits, especially with this savage defense that Miami has. So I'm super excited. I really think that at the end of the day, the defense won the scrimmage just based on what I've heard. And that's kind of been the way all season, and that's kind of a good thing. It keeps the offense on their toes, and it keeps them working harder to get better and better. We want really both sides of the ball, ideally, to be facing a really tough opponent uh, ourselves basically so that way we can play better when it comes to play you know these big games like FSU or if we we make it to the college football playoffs we're going to be playing some tough teams and really there's even some tough teams just in the ACC in general so we definitely want as much practice against good teams which is hopefully ourselves as possible so again next scrimmage will be on campus this time this first scrimmage was at Hard Rock Stadium it's still closed to the public, however, so there's not going to be a lot of video or anything from the scrimmage. But these are mostly, it's just trying to fill out the players for the coaches so they can kind of gauge where they are and get a depth chart together and see where they want to take um, the players and what what position, you know, what who's going to be first, second, third string, and get all of that together. So it's mostly for them, but it's cool to kind of see the stats and see where the players are at. And definitely, guys, be sure to subscribe. Again, I'm working on the FSU versus Miami diss track that will be dropping later this week, maybe next week. I don't know. We're going to see where it goes. I'm not a rapper, but it, it's going to be exciting to diss FSU, of course, as always. And we are going to have 
like a live hangout for every game this season. So what I'm going to do is I can't show the game, of course, because the NCAA would spank us for that. So I can't do that. But I'm going to have the game up in front of me and have the webcam on me. Basically what you guys are looking at right now. But there will be a live chat up on YouTube Live. So that way we can chat about the game. You know, if something crazy happens, we I'll be talking to you like this. But you guys can chat to me. Either, you know, you can pull out your phone and have it up while you're watching the game. Or, you know, maybe have your laptop up. Or you're, if you're like me, I watch it on stream it from my computer. So you could have that up on an extra monitor or on the side. And that way just kind of be a virtual hangout if you're like me. Uh, I don't have a lot of Miami fans around me living in the volunteer state. So it would just be kind of cool for all of us to come together and hang out, you know, well, just watch the game together. It would be super fun. But be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when we go live for those games. And uh, just so you can see every video. And, again, I appreciate all of the comments. It's really awesome to see and respond to a lot of the comments you guys have. Even the bad ones. It's okay. You know, I, I don't take anything to heart. I get a lot of harsh comments from probably those FSU guys, you know who you are, and even some of the other Miami Hurricanes fans, and there's there's nothing wrong with that, people have different opinions, it's super cool, I don't get mad, I love responding to them, so definitely leave a comment below, uh, let me know who you were most impressed by um, for the scrimmage one, who you thought had the biggest impact based on the stats and the videos that we have. But remember guys, we're all one big happy college football family, but it's always better at the end of the day when you get to rep the U. I appreciate everything guys. Enjoy the rest of the week and stay tuned for that diss track. It's coming soon guys. Peace out.